تقريبا معانا من 10 سنوات. بعد كده لقيت اقبال كبير من الولايات الثانيه يجوا لنيويورك عشان يحضروا هذه هذا الشهر هذا اليوم من الشهر. بعد كده قالت ليش ما اسوي ابلكيشن لكل مدينه تفتح ويكون لها مسؤول شخص شخص واحد. اوكي فاحنا الحين تقريبا 196 مدينه نسميها تشابتر. Uh, our global uh, headquarters team, thank you so much. Uh, we are spreading in uh, A big thank you to our volunteers. We are all volunteering. I am a host of all the team members. So thank you, Leal, Jihad, Sara, Nora, Fatma, Ala, Anud, Johara, and Thank you for documenting today's event, Abdurrahman Faisal. اوكي okay. من الستيشنز الموجودة برا عندنا حاجة اسمها هيدن تالنت الهيدن تالنت اي احد خلينا نقول فوتوغرافر جرافيك ديزاينر كوبي رايتر ايا كان وعندكم تالنت احنا حابين نعرفها احنا ككريتيف مورنينج ممكن يوم من الايام نحتاجكم وممكن اي احد من الانتربرنورشيب يسال فاحنا نعطيهم ارقامكم بالتواصل فشيرت وذ اس اوكي هنا رياض بيج تقريبا احنا كل شهر نسوي زي الريكاب ريكاب ونحط الانفورميشن حق التالنت كمان في البيج لو احد يحتاج اي شخص يكون موجود. في عندنا كمان ستيشن ثاني اسمه كولابوريشن ستيشن الكولابوريشن ستيشن هو بس حاجه تساعد الستارت ابس او اي شركه محتاجين خلينا نقول فوتوغرافر واحنا المنظمه حقنا البروجكت تايتل كريتيف مورنينجز فكريتيف مورنينجز حق ايفنتات خلينا نقول فاحنا نحتاج نحتاج فوتوغرافر فاي احد من الحضور بس باس باي الستيشن وممكن احد منكم فوتوغرافر او جرافيك ديزاينر انا حطه بوت رايحين بعدين انتم اكتبوا الانفورميشن حقكم واستكت على الورقه فاحنا كريتيف مورنينجز عباره عن حلقه وصل بين الستارت ابس و والانديفيدوالز اللي هم Uh, الشهر اللي فات وي لانشد ستيشن جديد اسمه بوك سواب ستيشن احنا نعرف انه الكتب احيانا نقراها وتقعد في الشمس فبعد كذا قاعدة فممكن نعطيها لاي شخص موجود عندنا برضه ستيشن اي حد عنده كتاب زايد اكتبوا كريتيف نوت على الـ على الفرونت بيج وخلوا النكست ليدر يتحمس انه يقرا السوشيال ميديا اكونت عندنا تويتر وانستغرام رياض اندرسكور سي ام هذا الهاشتاج حق هذا الشهر سي ام سيرين وسي ام اي اتش عندنا فقره نهايه التوك اسمها 30 سكند بيتشز اي احد عنده ستارت اب او عنده اي فكره بلاتفورم او منصه حابب يقولها للببليك تقدروا تطلعوا نحتاج خمس اشخاص يطلعوا يتكلموا عن هذه المنصه Okay, the theme of the show is Siri. What do you have to do with the ice breaker times? Anna, for example, applying for a great morning. Any other? Hello, we have to share. Yes. Hello, I'm Mr. Shami, coach for the Kuwa Bengal. I'm going to show you my life. I'm going to show you my life. الهدف من كريتيف مورنينجز انه احنا وي شير وي انجيج يلا صباح الخير انا لسه منتسى اي ثينك ذا موست ريفيل اكسبيرينس هي عندي انه داخل العملية ومن التخطيط وانا عم بصحى كنت حموت تو سي ماي سيلف كومينج اوت ان اوت اوف ات وكا امي ولا ذات واز فيري شوكينج صراحة ذات واز ذا موست ريفيل ثينج اي كان ثينك Honestly, we have been attached to some C 
daily experience for me. We have it that. <laughs> Hello, good morning everyone. Uh, this is Bilal al Sheikh. Uh, starting my business and taking this initiative of building your own thing. Like every day it is a serious experience and challenging yourself. Sorry. So, surreal is basically experiences that we face and sometimes in life, like this guy holding the surfer board, facing the ocean, we are sometimes in the world like this. We just, we're alone. Nothing in front of us. I think some of you can relate to what I'm saying, right? Yeah, I hope so. So, sometimes you get whacked in life, and sometimes it happens in uncanny and surprising ways. What does that mean? We all face challenges. We all face some hardships, some obstacles. And it's overcoming these challenges and obstacles that shape our personality and makes us who we are. So growing up in St. Louis, Kansas City, um, I used to play 
football, American football, not the, the real football. <laughs> because it's a surreal sport. All right, a lot of stuff comes your way. And I'm going to show you something here. While I'm talking, enjoy the, the hard hits. <laughs> All right? So, um, growing up, I was a football player. And this was my first, I guess, surreal experience in life, is either taking these hits and dodging them and trying to score touchdowns. And uh, when I was in high school, I'm a small guy, all right? I'm a small guy, but I was very fast and I was strong. And the person who is six foot five, I could just be as athletic and as physical as him. And I built myself that way, and I made myself that way. Most of my people in my neighborhood, you know, it's like either you play football or you're just like, you know, an ant, basically. <laughs> and um, this is what I had to grow up with. So the reason why I'm showing you this is because life is like American football. And as I mentioned from the quote before, in life, stuff like this happens. You'll just get whacked, hit, and it'll just come unexpectedly. Maybe it's a divorce. You know, maybe you failed out of school. It could be anything. <coughs> so in high school, Alhamdulillah, my uh, team, we won three state championships. Two years we were undefeated, and um, the last year we lost two games, but we still made it to the championship, and I got three rings. I can't wear gold, it's haram, so I have to get silver. <laughs> All right? Um, it's just, uh, you'll see some uh, newspaper images of me in the newspaper. I have a twin brother, by the way, his name is Hussein. I'm Hassan. Uh, this is him, and that's me down there. And that's me, I was wearing number five. Um, these are my defensive team players. So why am I showing you this picture here? Because football isn't just about, you know, just the game itself. It also shapes my personality, all right? It's a brotherhood, and it's a learning experience. You learn, again, how to take on life on and off the field. So I want to switch over from football to another surreal experience. Surreal can be a life-changing experience, like I just explained to you with football. Here I want to talk to you about um, a classmate of mine. His name is Jared Mueller. And Jared, this was my sophomore year. I think it was back in 2005. All right, back in 2005. Jared was uh, the popular guy at school. I lived in a small town called Raymore when we moved to a small town called Raymore, Missouri. And my twin brother and I were the eighth and ninth African Americans in the school. So basically, there were like 10 black people in the whole entire school, and everyone else was white. So everyone knew who Hessen and Hussein was because one, we had Arabic names, and two, we were black. So, uh, and, you know, yeah, thank you. <laughs> Anyway, Jared was like the uh, bully of Rainmore Peculiar High School. And my brother, he wasn't playing football that year because he got into some trouble. So he and Jared got into an altercation. An altercation is a fight. <laughs> and uh, my brother won. He beat up Jared. Two weeks later, in a tragedy, Jared Mueller. got into a car accident, and he died in a very tragic car accident. Jerry was known for bullying people, stealing people's uh, lunch money, um, sleeping around, and two weeks before he died, he was known as the kid who lost the fight to Hussein. They called him out at school. No one had nothing nice to say about Jerry. Nothing nice. I remember when we went to uh, the place where the car accident happened. And all of his friends that were standing there, they were smoking cigarettes. Some of them were smoking weed. And they were saying, Jerry, 
I bet you're up there with the angels smoking. And my twin brother and I were like, what? And um, on the floor, on the street, you would find some uh, inappropriate raps, you know, that he would use for, you know, when he was having fun with other people of the opposite sex. I'm not going to mention the name, but you know what I'm talking about. There was a lot of those all over the street, tons of them. And the people were saying, oh, Jared, I bet he's up there doing that with the angels. And I'm like, what? Um, a lot of alcohol bottles on the floor, or on the street, I should say. Tons of them. Oh, Jared, I bet you're up there getting drunk with the angels. These were the comments that they were remembering about Jared. Nothing nice to say. Not even, oh, I remember Jared, he helped this person. Oh, I remember Jared, he, uh, he gave back to this person. Oh, I remember Jared, he did something nice. It was 100% negative. 100% negative. That changed my life because I thought to myself, I don't want to die knowing that this is how people would remember me as a negative person. No one has anything nice to say. A lot of us, we have these titles, CEO, uh, business analyst, doctor this, PhD that, master that, and what about the character, the shucks behind it? Do you leave work and all of your employees are like, man, I'm glad this person just left the office and they're cursing you behind your back. I mean, do you not think about that? This is something that you should really, really ponder about because it's serious. If you die, any one of us can die at any moment on the way home, may Allah forbid, from that happening. And you have a bad rapport with your colleagues at work or with the people that you employ, they see you as this negative personality. It, I mean, we can just imagine what the next life would look like. Anyway, so this was Jared. Nothing nice to say. Nothing. That's why I, I you know, put the names <laughs> It's sad. And the sad part also is that he was young. We were like maybe 15 or 16 years old. He was young. How was he driving though? So, I'll share a short synopsis of what happened. Um, it, we lived in a cul-de-sac. It's like a circle, basically, of houses like this. And uh, there's a street here with other houses. Sorry I can't get you the real picture, but I'm trying to do my best to explain it. Anyway, um, there's a lady or a girl, her name was Laura, and uh, Jared and Laura were best friends, and Laura's boyfriend lived right next door, all right? right next door, boyfriend girl. Jared left Laura's house. I don't have to explain what happened. Okay? And on the way back home, Jared was driving fast and he was on the phone with Laura. And the last thing Laura heard was holy and the S word. That was the last thing. Laura and my twin brother were good friends. She used to call my brother a lot. Sorry for exposing that. <laughs> All right? And she called my brother immediately at 12 o'clock in the morning. And uh, we had a house phone, we didn't have cell phones that time. All right, so my mom answered the phone, but she was listening. And she was like, oh my God, Al, I think something happened to Jared. The last thing I heard was holy, you know, and, and the S word. And my mom ran upstairs, she was like, Hussein, why is this girl Laura calling the house talking about Jared, blah, 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 blah. Why is there a girl calling the house? I was, I just pretended like I was asleep. <laughs> was like, I don't know, you know, she has a problem with her boyfriend and she, she was like, I don't want no females calling this house at no 12 o'clock. <laughs> so, anyway, um, 30 minutes later we hear sirens, actually it wasn't 30 minutes, it was 15 minutes. Uh, we can see, you know, because our house was, we had like uh, two and a half floors, or three floors actually. So we can kind of see the street. And where the accident happened, it wasn't too far from the house. So we saw the fire trucks and ambulance and even the helicopter go to the scene of where the accident happened. So Laura called back the house around 12.30 and she's crying and she said, oh, I think something happened to Jared. Can you please go out and check? And my brother was like, man, you are tripping. I'm not sneaking out of the house, especially for you. Like, I don't think it's Jared, but we'll find out. So we wake up usually at 5 o'clock in the morning for Fredrick and also to watch the morning news. So at 5.30, I think it was 5.30 to 6 o'clock in the morning, the morning news said, 
a 16-year-old Raymore Peculiar senior high school student, Jared Mueller, passed away in a tragic car accident. And that's how the whole, basically, town found out that Jared died. So that morning, we went to school, but they made it a half day. Um, so we went out to the scene where the car accident happened, and then, you know, as I mentioned before, that's basically what happened. What happened with Laura, she basically ended up leaving town because Jared left from her house, and then that was like a story itself. And, you know, her boyfriend obviously was like, so it was a whole chaos, basically. And it was very sad, very, very sad story. So I want to get into another story. Who knows what this says here? Any medical doctors in the building? Yes. No? Yes? So just one? So if just one doctor? Any other? Any PhDs? Almost. Almost? That counts? Physical therapy. That counts. Marcel. <laughs> so my mother had an aneurysm. And her aneurysm was caused due to stress. Usually aneurysms happen with older people, uh, not younger people. So I'll just try to explain briefly what an aneurysm is. It's like a, almost kind of like a tumor, but it's not. But it, it grows into like a bubble inside of your brain. And over time, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And if, and if the bubble explodes, what do you think would happen? You're going to You're what? You're going to Internal bleeding, um, brain damage, stroke, brain damage, stroke. stroke okay. uh, paralyzed. So what happened was my mom was in the masjid and she had a heart attack. So my father took her to the hospital, to the emergency room. They did a CAT scan, CT scan, full scan of the body. And they said, oh, Ms. Hawa, you have an aneurysm. And that's what caused the heart attack. And you have about five or six of them. They're going to explode any moment. You need to do an emergency surgery. This was a surreal experience for my family. I'm like, okay, it's horrible. A life and death situation for my mother. And they said that if it explodes, you may not remember your family. You may not remember your kids. You may not remember your husband. You may not, you may not even know yourself. Um, or you could even die. This is something that needs to be fixed now. So it was a very scary situation for her. Um, when she left the hospital before the surgery, because she had a heart attack, she was admitted in, and they scheduled the surgery to happen like a week later. I have an aunt in London, and we flew her in to come so she could, you know, help out with the family, and because she was also like the next closest person to my mother. And I remember the night before the surgery, we were, it was like, like 9 o'clock at night, I was looking for my mom, I'm like, mom, mom, where are you at? And uh, I saw the garage open, and there was no car. So my father, I went to my father and I said, uh, did you know that mom left the house? He was like, no, why did she leave the house? She's not supposed to go anywhere. And um, he was like, we need to go look for her. So we went driving around for three hours looking for my mother. She tried to run away because she was afraid. She didn't want to, you know, die. She wasn't ready for death. She wasn't ready to, you know, leave her children behind. She wasn't ready to face this situation. And also, the doctor said to her, if you survive, anything can happen. It could be, you know, you're back to your normal routine, or it could be you have memory loss, you're paralyzed, you know, something tragic, because you're tempering with the brain. You know, it's not, if you temper with the brain, it's, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's hard to deal with. So, a mother, you know, it's very difficult to deal with that situation. Anyway, we found her at uh, Walmart. Uh, are, you, are you guys familiar with Walmart? <laughs> yeah. She was in a parking lot. Her head was over the steering wheel. She was just crying, subhanAllah. So, um, you know, we went to her and we tried to comfort her. And, Drove her back to the house, and the whole night she couldn't sleep. She was terrified, and she was crying. Very hard night for the whole entire family. So, the next morning we went to the hospital, and alhamdulillah, she, she, she became stronger. She got stronger. 
as you know, the time was getting closer. The doctor, incredible, very nice doctor, mashallah. And he did an amazing job with reducing the fear. Now, I don't like hospitals, um, and I myself am terrified of surgery. I'm going to sidetrack for a second. When I used to play football, I got hurt and I tore my ACL. You know what an ACL is? Yeah. It's a ligament in the knee. And when I tore it, basically you can't walk, you can't run, you're like, you're finished. I was on a wheelchair for um, about a month and you know, it was a, a very tragic moment for me as well in my uh, football career. So long story short, when I was in the hospital and I was on the bed and the doctor was like, okay, I'm going to give you some feel-good medicine. I said, look, man, I'm not stupid. I know what feel-good medicine means. It means you're going to put me to sleep. If you're going to do that, don't tell me anything. Just go behind the bed, do whatever you're going to do. Otherwise, I'm just going to stand up with this gurney I have on, and I'm going to walk out the hospital. I know what the heart I'm a Mason Samaritan. I'm a Does that sound good? Yeah. And uh, he was like, oh, okay, I, I won't say anything. So these doctors did a very good job of making me feel comfortable going through this situation. It's a knee surgery. To him, it was probably like, this guy is just, you know, it's a knee surgery. But for me, it's like they're putting me to sleep. I may not wake up. And it's a two-hour long surgery. Now, the only thing I remember was someone shoving a straw up my mouth. Wake up, honey, can you hear us? And I'm like, why is it so cold? You know, I was shivering because it was cold. They're like, what's your name? I'm like, why is it so cold? Like, it happened so fast, all right? Now I'm going to go back to my mother's situation. She was in the hospital, and alhamdulillah, the surgery went very well. I think it was like a four-hour-long surgery. It went extremely well. She came out of the hospital 100% fine, alhamdulillah. It was a surreal experience. <coughs> Now I'm going to shift the mood a little bit because I, I think some of you feel sad. <laughs> All right? What does this say? Appreciate yourself. Great. Appreciate yourself. So we're going to do a little exercise real quick. I would like everyone to hold their own hands, not your neighbor's hands, your own hands. Hold it together. Everyone has to participate. Hold your hands, please. Hold it. Everyone holding their hands? Good. Okay. Now, appreciate life and what God has blessed you with. Now I want you to close your eyes. Close your eyes. Okay? We all face challenging situations, like the video you saw with the football players being whacked. We all face challenging situations. Now, do we really appreciate ourselves. Do you appreciate yourself? I want you to say, I appreciate myself. But don't say myself. Say you. You're talking to you. Now say it. While your eyes are closed and you're holding your hand, say, I appreciate you. You guys don't appreciate me? <laughs> I appreciate you. Come on, come on. You have to say it. I appreciate you. You're talking to yourself. Say it again like you mean it. I appreciate you. One more time, you guys don't seem like you mean what you're saying. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. You're appreciating yourself for all the hardships that you had in life, and you overcame them. Because we're in 2019, you're still living. You have your arms, you have your eyes, you have your head, you have everything. All right? Now, last thing we're going to say, alhamdulillah, before you open your eyes. Alhamdulillah. No, don't say it sad because you should be happy. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. 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 All right, good, good. You can open your eyes. <laughs> try to hold your own hands before you lean on someone else or you try to hold someone else's hands. And um, this is my son. When a child is, is learning how to walk and falls 50 times, he never thinks to himself, hmm, this isn't for me. Usually the child or the baby would stand back up and they would continue going. No matter how many times they fall, right? I think we all know that. Yeah. They don't give up. Now, because now we're older, we're much more mature, <laughs> life hits us very hard, we give up on something. Maybe someone's pursuing a, a doctor's degree in, in 
physiotherapy, in medicine, anything. And it just, it gets too hard. Now you're like, ah, I give up. I can't do this. It's hard work. It's your dream. You gave up on yourself. The exercise before is when you say, I appreciate you, you should appreciate yourself and do the hard work. Now, as I mentioned, babies don't give up. We're older people now. We are in our 20s, 30s, some of us are in our 40s. Why, why do we give up on life? Why do we give up on ourselves? Why if a baby, why doesn't a baby give up? Or why do we give up? Because it's ignorant. Huh? Because it's ignorant. No, babies aren't ignorant. <laughs> <laughs> babies are go-getters. That's the difference. They just, they have, they're just a ball of energy. They just want to keep going. They will never let anyone tell them no. If you have a child, you tell them no, like, you, you know, they're still going to do it. <laughs> I'm just keeping it real. Babies are courageous. We are in our 20s and 30s and we lose <coughs> the courage. We become complacent, weak, weak hearted and weak minded. Because we don't have this lion inside of us. And I'm not trying to uh, demean kharuf. You know, we <laughs> like, end up like goats and sheep. We just want to follow the herd and that's it. Lions, on the other hand, they're leaders, yes. Well, I'm sorry, I, this could be very philosophical for me, but I'm guessing because as we grow up, it could be society, it could be family, but some people can try to tame you down. It's not just that, but it's just the, the fact that um, things limit us as we grow older. Like me as a designer, I've always had, like I've always wanted to de design stuff, and then um, people in the field could tell me that this could not be done. Well, I'm sure there are ways that could be, they could be more expensive, but they just don't want to do it. I mean, that's, I mean, that's, that's where I'm going. I mean, it's, everyone is courageous at a point, but they kind of break you down to, to just be normal and um, like not, like, it's just and like, right. it could be society, it could be family, yes. it could be anything. But. And that's the hardest part about being courageous is when to use it. You use the courage in your very difficult situation. That's where it matters. Not when you don't need it. It's when you need it. So baby lions are courageous. They come out the womb, they're, they're just, you know, like babies, they're courageous. They're always, you know, antsy to do something, to try something. And when they touch the hot oven, and you know, the parent says, no, it's hot, they will still touch it because they're courageous. And they know it's hot. They will burn themselves. And they will still keep doing it until they know, okay, this is dangerous, I'm going to stay away from it. When you have people in your life, all right, that are a negative influence, now, how do you be courageous? And, you know, this in American football, we have this thing that's called the Heisman. Basically, when a person is running with the football and you bless them, it's like, pow, you like, push them away, you know, and you're still on your feet. That's what you're supposed to do with the negative people around you. How do you push them away? And I'll, and I'll get to that in a moment, Shaw. The cub becomes this beautiful, handsome lion. Mashallah, look at that. <laughs> just, you don't even want to mess with him when you see him. You're just like, man, we cool. <laughs> Sorry. Right? Unleash your power and roar. Now, we're going to do this exercise again, and we're all going to roar. <laughs> we're powerful people in, in this room, all right? So, I want ev because everyone has power, everyone has a voice, and we're going to use our voices right now, okay? So, I would like everyone to roar, all right? On three. One, two, three. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> let's do this again. All right? Not the baby symbol, the fossil. All right? Now, you don't have to roar like a lion. I roar differently. Like, you know, when I wake up from sleep, sometimes I'm like, Woo! You know, my wife is like, yo, what happened? I'm like, I'm just excited. You know, my son is like, you know, I, I, sometimes I wake up like that. I'm just super excited. All right, so now I want everyone to be super excited and more, right? 
you don't have to sound like a lion. You can be like yourself. Uh, you, you heard me, so ready? One, two, three. Again, again, we're going to do this right. All right, we're going to do this right. You can sound like a lion if you want. You can just be like, hey, or ah, whatever you want to do, do it. Bring out the energy. All right, ready? One, two, three. How does that feel? How does that feel? Good? You're happy. It's supposed to feel good. When you unleash your power, you will feel good. That's the point. Because you're leading yourself. All right? Your future is created by what you do today, not tomorrow. What matters is now. We entered this year, 2019, uh, I met with some people before, and they told me some amazing stories. You know, some, someone got a job, someone won a debate. Where are you at? Yeah. Debate <laughs> All right. Um, a lot of things happen. A lot of beautiful, amazing things happen to some people. And others are still facing tragic situations, and they're trying to get out of it. Utilize today. Don't wait for it tomorrow. Utilize now when you leave this room that I'm going to walk out this room a lion today. I'm going to walk out a better person. And the people that are like my enemies, I don't want to call people enemies, but the people that are discouraging, I'm going to be courageous and I'm going to face them. And I'm going to tell them, no, you're wrong and I'm right. If that's the situation. I don't want anybody to leave out of here and get a divorce them. <laughs> Okay? Be courageous. Stand up for what you believe, and inshallah, you'll be alright. Um, I'm going to show you this other video here, again, football, alright? And how it taught me to be courageous. And as the video is playing, I'll speak. So the first video you saw, people were getting whacked. You can hurdle them. You can hurdle them. It's about knowing how to dodge. How do you dodge these obstacles? How do you dodge these challenges? When you master the game and you're very good, then you'll be very successful. And again, I told you, like, when I played football, I learned on the field how to dodge these hits. I was very fast, I was very shifty, and very successful. And I use that in my life, all right? And, you know, there's this thing going on on Instagram or social media. It's the 10-year challenge or something like that. You guys know about that? Yeah. All right, I'm 30 years old. From the age 20 to 30, I traveled to 35 countries. I started a company. I'm a CEO. I'm working with renowned, high-profile business people. My organization is about to make an agreement, inshallah, with King Saud University, and we're going to do a training next month. You know, discouraging people in my life, a lot, a lot of haters, and I loved it, because those haters was fuel for me. I'm like, okay, cool, keep, keep telling me I can't do it, keep telling me I'm too short, keep telling me I don't have a strong enough team, okay, guess what, I've done it, and I'm 30, and then soon, inshallah, I'll be a top 30 under 30 before I turn 40, <laughs> all right, so um, that's the end of my presentation, just remember, hold your hand. Don't be quick to rely on other people. You need to own yourself first. Be grateful for all the obstacles you have in life. They have strengthened you as you continue with your journey. Any hardship you are facing, it's meant to strengthen you. If you went through a divorce, it's meant to strengthen you. If you lost a loved one, someone died, it's meant to strengthen you. It's not meant to weaken you. Any challenge in life, like Allah said, in the ma'usri yusra, for every hardship comes ease. So if you know that, you live that, you'll be all right, inshallah. There's an activity I have for you guys also, all right? Um, there's a surprise. I like surprises. There's an envelope underneath your seats, all right? Um, earlier we asked, what would you do if you had a creative morning that gave you 100,000 salary 
There's a surprise under your seat. Please take out the envelope that's underneath your seat. about the 
why people have such an impact about how we feel about ourselves. Okay, well, the yeah, reason, that was my, yeah. my, my first thought about Jared's story that you would say you know, he no one remembered him with something good. But I feel that maybe he has another part of the story that he does know of, but he wasn't lucky enough for it to be shared. Okay, fair enough for you to say that. That's a very fair uh, judgment for you to make. Now, for me, I know Jerry very well, but you don't know him. And I'm sharing his story. All right? Like, we can share the... experience with him. Okay, but I, the experience that I shared, it wasn't even just a personal experience. It was, it was how his life ended. That was the experience that I shared. How his life ended. Okay, I don't know Jared from five years old. I only know him for from the first year of high school, my sophomore year of high school. And how I know him is, you know, basically from my daily interactions with him. The stuff that I saw and experienced and everyone else experienced with him. So like I also mentioned, you know, some bosses or leaders or people in powerful positions, okay, come into the office and, you know, we, we can be very arrogant. Okay, because we have this position. And the rest of the people looking at you, you know, they have these bad feelings, but you, you're, you're, too, you're stuck in this box that you can't even see the people outside of your window. You're just, the only thing you can see is yourself and your type and the money you probably have. So the example that I gave is also a nasiha somewhat, is to, is to be considerate. Don't be stuck and just focus on you, your title, and everything, and also your personality. You mean like if you focus on yourself too much, that would end up being, you end up being selfish because you're not considered enough about the people around you. Focus on yourself and develop yourself to be a good person, to be the best you can be. Be a team player. All right. Be considerate. Be truthful. Be fair. Either be just. Yeah, I get that. But you get that. It's not only about you, it's about the community around you. And it's, the all, yeah, it's not just about you. Yeah, Again. That, that's what yes. you're going for. Yes. Thank you. Uh, well, I'm guessing what I'm saying is not really a question as much as it's something that I want to emphasize. Because I don't really think that um, any surreal experience could be life changing or something that I should really very long. Um, for example, one of my most surreal memories or one of the most surreal experiences was um, <coughs> probably like the one thing that came up in my mind was like car racing on a foggy day in the mountain because it was like uh, I could die any second. I couldn't see the roads. Like, the only thing I was seeing was the maps on the car. Um, but I, as a person, I was afraid of um, speeding. I wasn't like the most um, maybe adventurous person in, in the world, but I decided one day that I should just try something new, and um, so I, I, it's not life changing, it's nothing that has really changed me or impacted me in any way, but I feel like it's, it's, it's just an experience I had, it was fun, um, I did it for the sake of it, so I don't um, I feel like talking about, I just wanted to mention like any sort of experience doesn't really have to be life changing or something that really um, uh, to learn from, I mean that's just my theory of a surreal experience. Thank you so much. And yes, that is your prerogative to say that. Um, surrealism, it, like I mentioned, it can be a life-changing experience. And I just decided to um, showcase or focus on the surreal experiences that were life-changing to me. I had, I have many surreal experiences <coughs> that aren't life-changing but uh, positive and impact. Um, and you know, some negative, but not so much life-changing. I hope I answered your question. Yeah. yeah. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my name is Brahim Nagel. Thank you so much, man, for a great presentation. Maybe you overreact or not do the right thing. But when, when you have this surreal moment or you, this tragic moment, what, what, what is the right way to act to, to really you know, make sure that it, you don't run away from it, that, as you mentioned, your mother might have? So, that's a, a very good question, mashallah. Um, it's, it's very difficult to say because 
when you are in that moment, you're you're not really in, in the right consciousness. You know, you're 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 emotionally all over the place. You're psychologically all over the place. And as I mentioned earlier, if you have support, a very strong support system, people who love you and people who will not lead you astray. All right, mentors, family members that will that are next to you, that can be that you know support system when you're weak. They will uplift you, and that's where you know that balance comes in. And again, we flew my aunt from London. That was like a two thousand five hundred dollar ticket, last minute choice to come. All right, and we knew that it's not that my father, you know, it's not that much of a you know strong support for my wife. Uh, my my mother, but you know, it's like we knew that this addition to the situation is like the icing on the cake, or the candles and the Fourth of July and everything to go with it. So, if anyone is facing a hardship or you know a hard situation, don't go through it alone. But make sure you have the right people in your life to help you come back up. And it's very difficult to even, you know, gauge this because if it's someone, um, you know, that's like, oh, you know, that people can give you the wrong advice. I tend to say, look to older people. Robert is like 70 years old. You know, uh, my other mentor, his name is Ani Ahmed. He's uh, from Philadelphia. He's like 65 years old. These are my mentors that I talk to almost on a daily basis. Now, their age, you know, there's a saying, with age comes hikmah or wisdom. You guys know that? Yes. These people, you know, they face these type of experiences. They know how to deal with it. So when you have, again, this support system and people like that in your life, it should, inshallah, make the situation better. But also remember, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's the first, you know, dying that you should go back to. Thank you. I hope I answered Yeah, absolutely.
be prepared to face it. Don't let it weaken you and just fight through it. You're not the only one. There are many, the prophets had, you know, I, I don't want to get into Islamic history and stuff like that, but they all faced these hard challenges and they had to go through it individually. They had to be courageous. They had to fight through it and they had to take the consequences. Sometimes it's very painful. You don't want to go through the pain, but you have to go through it and it builds you, it makes you stronger and it makes you better. And inshallah, if it's something that you know is good for you, you can then teach your children and say, hey look, watch out for this, I went through this. All right, and you can nurture and groom your children and shape their personalities in a way that they're strong because you taught them you know, from certain situations and experiences that you had in life. That's the best answer I can give. I'm so sorry, I hope I didn't. No, it's all right, thank you. Hello, uh, thank you so much for your talk. This was very inspiring. And I just have a question. It was very uh, shocking for me that the, the disease that you mentioned and the tragic story you talked about your mother and that tumor-like uh, disease that comes from you know, stress and all of that. I was, I'm always wondering, like, how do you deal, um, like in this modern age, you're always likely to get stressed, uh, putting uh, goals that maybe you're not appreciating yourself enough that you're saying, no, this is enough. So what is the fine line for you to like say to yourself, no, I need a break, or that's too stressful? Again, everyone is different. And for myself, like, you know, there comes a time where you say enough is enough. When you say to a child, khalas, enough, like, they'll leave you alone. And if you tell that to yourself and you implement a lion mode inside of you, then you are a step closer to make, being in a better situation. It's all about the implementation. Anyone can put rules on the paper, can make goals, but okay, what are you doing to accomplish it? Writing is a step, but it's all about the action. And again, it's making that courageous step to making that happen. That's the hardest part, is being courageous and just doing it. Like Nike says, just do it. Just sometimes you just have to do it. And it may be painful, it may not be, but it's something you just gotta do. I hope I answered it.
I just want to add to your sentiments. You're absolutely right. And my answers are generic. I can't give you forthright answers because I don't know anyone's personal situation. So they're generic answers. If I knew the personal situation, that I could give you a you know, much more in-depth answer to show a lot of, you know, better the situation. But again, as I mentioned before, if you have people in your life that can help push you to make courageous decisions, it's very helpful. At the end of the day, the ball is on your court. It's up to you. Either you stick with the suffering or you put yourself out of that situation and you go through a suffering situation to get to a better situation. And this is life in general. Again, as I mentioned, all the Sahabas, all the Prophets went through crazy experiences. And they and they got through it. Some people had, you know, were ostracized from their family, meaning like their family's like, Hoss, you're not part of this anymore. It's something you just have to deal with. But to put yourself in a better situation. I'm not advising you to do that. Again, there are risks in life that you have to take. And if it's worth it to make you happier, do it, but not haphazard. Do it in the right way. And make sure you know yourself before you're doing something. Because oftentimes, you don't know yourself. You don't have integrity. All right? And you're not, you know, from the word integrity comes the word integer, which means whole. You're not whole. You know, half of you is trying to be like Britney Spears or someone else, and the other half is just falling. You're not yourself. You don't know yourself. So when you are whole, you know yourself. That's one step closer to making courageous decisions. Thank you so much.
فورنيتشر فاي منتج الادوات الفنيه حاليا عندنا اللوح مثلا الكانفاس بعض الاحفار الادوات الفنيه اذا تنتجون اي شيء له علاقه بالفنون الملابس اي هاف هير سم كونتاكتس فور ذا Get in touch with me, and um, this would be appreciated. Uh, thank you. Okay, I have a good picture of Andrew or Frank Ward. I started Proyke last four years. I'm focusing on innovation and gift items, customized gift items. So that's basically me. This year, uh, we are uh, focusing to do a workshop on prototyping and packaging design. So anyone interested, I'm here. Thank you. Social media, or the 